Hi everyone, welcome back to the shop. Well, I thought I'd do a uh, another video on the, the the dreaded eclipse. There seems to be a few comments uh, about this. People wanting a bit more information. Am I going to show you how to uh, actually repair one? Uh, no, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, am I going to show you how to find the fault? Most possibly. Right, as you know, this is the eclipse. First thing you need to do, like I've said in my other videos, turn it into this form. Now, once you're opened, if you come across something like this, you've already found your problem. And good luck finding a heater. I can't find any anywhere. Uh, hence why I no longer repair them. Uh, but yeah, good luck. I mean, you may be able to buy some duff ones on eBay to get a heater, you know, make make one good one out of two, as they say, but uh, don't hold your breath. I'm sure probably this heater may be all right, I don't know. I haven't tried it. Uh, but then you've still got to go, you know, actually reconnecting the new heater, which I actually showed in a previous video. Right, fault finding. Right, the Eclipse has some quirky quirks. Uh, let's get some of these. Oh, that looks horrible. Okay, that one looks a bit better. Right, heat fuse. There's one in either side. Check them both. Remember which side they came from. And uh, let me get a meter in the picture, hopefully. Right. Right. Okay, meters in the picture, set on ohms, obviously. Measure across the around zero. These are good heat views. Make sure you've got two good heat views, fuses. If you haven't, uh, then one of my previous videos shows you how to reset them. So you don't have to go through the expense of buying another one. But they are very robust heat fuses. If it's trips, there's a reason. Right. Next thing we need to check is if your heaters look good. I don't know if I'll find a heater which... Uh, probably not. Okay, I'm not going to find one for love, nor money. But, I mean, these should all feel smooth. Uh, sometimes you can actually see a blown mark. It almost looks like a scratch across it. That means you need a new heater. So check these, make sure they all look intact and there's nothing untowards on the two surfaces. These look good. Okay. Next thing, let's check the heaters themselves. So, trusty ohm meter. Right, big long connector at the bottom is the common, and we can run up these three heater elements here. So, I've got 185 here, 190, 197. We've got resistance, so they're they're still working. 163, 167, 170. So they're intact. There's no fast rule of what they should read. Uh, obviously, if they don't read, if they read open circuit, they're gone. Uh, if they read something, you know, around 150 to 200 ohms, they're they're pretty good. Right. Next thing we want to do is check the thermistors. And that's these four pads here. Right, on this side, if you don't know which way I've got it, I've got the processor EEPROM to my right. So I'm working on the left hand side. So while it's laid out like this, the one at 10 o'clock is the common. And if I move my meter out of the way, meter back in frame. And we should be able to. Just go between these. Right, we've got 2k, 7k, 
and 2k okay immediately says there's a problem there doesn't mean it's a problem with the thermistor I'll show you why later all right let's do this here because it will ask about face so this time the common is at four o'clock let's do the other pins two and a half k yeah 2.2k 2.2k that looks good right immediately we know that the one that was at four o'clock let's put it in frame one at four o'clock is a bit off like i said don't blame this because the common failure of these is these connections here so what i will do is we need to check from we got by you got the processor and you got three resistors in a line three resistors in the line these are all tied in to the thermistors right so the first one i'm going to check is uh, i will actually come over here and i will do closest resistor to the processor gives to 10 o'clock so i should get zero ohms there hopefully you can see that on the meter so the cable to there to there's fine next one along goes to two o'clock again that's good and the final one along goes to eight o'clock and then you got a common here which you can actually you can pick up the common on this big rail here that that side's fine just move me a meter over to this side right which is this bank of resistors first resistor here goes to the four o'clock position 10k not good second resistor goes to two o'clock yep that's okay it's only one ohm third resistor goes to eight o'clock here we go that's good and the common same point so what we now know is this lead here to here is broken it will be broken here now what i've done in the past i have actually scraped either side and uh, actually tinned those it's a bit of a pig uh, the other thing I've done is just a shame I haven't got one laying in the box. Uh, but I have very thin Teflon coated cable. And yeah, I will actually solder to there. Come up through there. And we'll cut a slot in maybe that side to allow that. So what I'll do is there, round, all the way through, and then connect it there. And that will solve that problem until another one goes. Uh, some I've actually done all three, because they, this set of connectors that feeds through here is actually on a bend, and it's a weak point. So once you've got all those done, and your heat is back together, it should heat up. I'm not saying it'll be at the right temperature, because you need to balance these and i do it six zones simultaneously i'll get a reading from all six and i can see if any are, are reading hot and if they are what you do is change the corresponding resistor these are all i think 1k at the moment so let's see which i got to work out what zones or what now so so if we say zone one two three and zone one two three this the first one here is zone is zone two 
So changing this resistor will affect this zone. This one here is at zone 3. Changing this one affects this zone. Changing this resistor affects this zone. On the other side, this resistor here is for zone 2, so it affects this one. This resistor here affects zone 1, which is this one, and this one here affects zone 3, this one. Um, have I got a piece of paper? Typical when you need a piece of paper, you cannot find one. La la la. la. Hold on. Right, I've got some, let's just clip my mic back on. I've got some paper, right. Just to make it all a bit easier for you. One, two, three. These are the zones. One, two, three. You got the processor, and you got one, two, three resistors, and slightly offset there. One, two, three resistors. Just draw some lines, and it's two, three, one. 2, 1, 3. These are the resistors. Right, at the moment they're 1k. Right, so going up. So if you put a 2k in, it will drop this, te it will drop the temperature of this zone. I mean, generally they read high, so I mean, you may find this, say, just for argument's sake, this is the zone here is reading 205 degrees C then it'll be three so change this one here instead of it being 1k make it something different i've got a whole range uh, from 1k to three and a half k sometimes i'm on uh, the eclipses that i used to do when they're reading like 230 odd degrees c i was up to about 3k three and a half k on some of these uh, it's a case of you let it cool down, change out the resistor, try again. It's long-winded. That's why I used to uh, charge so much for it, because I could do the repair in 20 minutes, on par to a normal GHD. But then it could take anything up to 8 hours to actually balance this, because I would fire it up, reading six at a time and get me get myself a set of readings and say right this zone's too high this zone's too high let it cool down change out the resistors try again oh, i haven't put enough res i need a higher value do it again uh, oh i've gone too far now so it'd be changing it and yeah it, they wouldn't be be quite common to go up and down letting these cool down 20 30 times to get it right if you're really lucky uh, just one of these is rogue well actually if you're really lucky none of them are rogue and you'll do that repair put it together it'll work bloody lovely if you're unlucky then you need to order yourself up some of these resistors and have fun that's all I can say. Right, like I said, I've told you how to do it, but I haven't done it. I'm not on camera. I thought I was a crack then. But basically, that's how you do it for anyone that's interested. I don't know if that drawing's coming out. Change the brightness. Because that could be quite useful for you. If you want to know the squares, I'll just do this. Get off. That one's a common. 
that one's a three, that one's two, that one's one. And on here, two, one, common, three. The point you measure is actually this side here, here, here. So you measure from basically this point to this point, this point to this point, this point to this point. And same, it's the inner edge here. And on this side, I'll swap hands, hopefully I can do it. This one to here, this one to here, this one to here. There should be zero ohms because these should be, can I, that should be linked to there, uh, that should be linked to there, and obviously that one's linked to there. And like I said, common fault, they break there, which gives you the flashy lights and all that. Okay, hope that was uh, a bit of use for some people. Uh, I don't envy anyone repairing these. I used to hate the damn things, uh, mainly because they used to take so damn long. And just when you actually got it good, you would break it again for some reason. It, it happens and you developed another fault. And yeah, they they were a pain and uh, like I said you can't get the heaters anymore which is a bit of a godsend for me uh, but yeah if you want to have a go at repairing them you know, good luck all the best all right many thanks for watching I hope it was informative don't forget to subscribe don't forget to subscribe